When I was a kid, I grew up in the South. And before the English and Barbadians made sweet tea, and before Scots and West Africans brought us the great fried chicken, we subsisted off the sunlight, or so I was told. And they say the sun of Alabama is different than anywhere in the world. The light shines through the branches and brambles and touches the backs of people who sweat, swelter, smile, and sing in that sunshine. And I remember being a kid, believing everything I knew about the world must be true, simultaneously having this great curiosity only a kid could hold, with big hands and wide eyes. I find it funny how scientists, the most brilliant minds, are so much like children. Their incredible intelligence leads to wondrous curiosity of the universe, and yet so often persist that the knowledge they hold must be the truth. The learned men don't want to live as gullible as children who see politics and slain dragons on equity in terms of reality. It was only a couple of weeks ago when my physics teacher asked me, and I'm not sure why he asked me, me a student of less than a year, to solve a problem that some scientists have dedicated their lives to answering. I hope he doesn't think I've been trying that hard. Asked me nonetheless whether light was a wave or a particle. The logical approach, let's look at the facts. Let's look at how sunlight comes through a prism bent in the old glass window, splits into each of its color components, a vast array of frequencies our eyes see and call it a rainbow. Frequency belongs to a wave. Isaac Newton. Look at the facts. The wavelength of light is one millionth of a meter. Wavelength, light, wave. Light is a wave, Thomas Young. Light sits on the electromagnetic wave scale Maxwell, visible light rests on a pinpoint between ultraviolet and infrared. On the same scale as x-rays and radio waves, the things that help me make it through my day, light is a wave. Look at the facts. Grimaldi and Huygens found that light waves refract and diffract. They interfere constructively and destructively. Put a piece of paper halfway through the light of a laser beam, you'll find that one point split into a thousand, a change in dimension. How does that happen? A wave. A wave while the light bends as its reflection passes through water from a fish in a pond through a spoon in a glass of water. Things are not what they appear to be. Things are not what they appear to seem. A particle is what makes appear perfect shadow. Isaac Newton, hot is a metal seatbelt in your car on a summer day. When you reach for its safety, your hand flinches away. Nothing more than direct sunlight has reached that metal, but that light gave it energy. Energy given off its heat. Energy passed from atom to atom. What atom does a wave have? Photon. That same molecule that makes solar power possible that traps the energy inside the wave called quanta that powers homes and automobiles and cooks meals, photons, what captured the moment at Disney World. When you wore orange shorts and your friend Mickey Mouse ears, when she decided to say hello to the man wearing a giant white cat suit. Photons, those are a thing. Albert Einstein, and I wonder where Einstein wandered on the path of knowledge the first time he asked that same uncompromising question, how long he tried to decide on a side of black or white. To answer it simply with some fictitious myth, maybe at most an exception to the rule like every other sentence in my literature book, to safeguard the absolute, absolutely, that science will not give in to the sway of philosophy and morality and subjectivity. How many years was he alive before he hypothesized that science is not a cold, hard fact? Brought to you like a history date, the unchangeable fate, when you look at a man's eyes who five minutes ago was laughing, is now 
stone cold. How long was Einstein searching, fighting, dreaming before he stood up by means of typewriter and white sheets of paper to say that sometimes the universe is funny? Sometimes the universe is obdurate, perplex perplexing, extraordinary, incomprehensible, and light was all of these things. Defined in Planck's constant, Einstein developed the photoelectron theory, and a committee of men designed to test the tests of others awarded this test of science itself a Nobel Prize because they realized that science was not just a fact, but a balancing act of the things that grounded them and the things that sent them shooting for the stars. How could science exist? Though the curiosity of those who cannot accept the way things are, who are too stubborn to believe that the problems of today are the problems of forever, that this will always just be the way it is. Fact was simply for exploring, communicating, sharing, a place to start from, a religion, a lover that you hold on to. And when Planck looked into the eye of his lover, and saw that nothing could ever be the same. He refused such an idea, and so many others walked away. Light shows properties of both waves and particles. Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, Fabrizio Carbo. The philosophical approach, because that's all man has when curiosity exceeds technology, what I've seen in the world has surely taught me this much. I know that my mind is a dichotomy. The sharpest contrast exists, not contradictory to one another, but complementing one another, feeding off of each other, existing because of the other. Comic books and mythology taught me that the very thing which gives heroes their strength is the same thing that destroys them. The greatest men are hypocrites. Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I've learned that experiences and knowledge can't fit themselves into perfect manila envelopes, perfect filing cabinets with perfect labels that don't overlap with one another and fit there forever. I've learned in every situation you can find a good and a bad, a pretty and ugly, a positive and a negative, that there is a shadow cast by every story you do hear, every event you see take place, every experience you live through, there is something greater that causes it, that comes from it. You haven't begun to understand it. And most of the world exists in this gray, shadowy area. The world is not black and white. Doris Lessing. When children grow up, as all children do, they lose some part of themselves. They some part they call innocence. When scientists start learning, as all scientists must, they lose something, something which first made them. The curiosity, their adherence to facts, their ability to explore, the creativity, their ability to use wide eyes and open hands to see the world, to draw it on a blank slate, a sheet of white paper after the other one was turned over, their ability to turn their back. On that they thought was true, their courage. If you ask a child who holds on to no previous knowledge or bias, it's light a wave or an entity of particle, and they gave you an answer at all, they'll tell you rehash from times of decision making over toys and ice cream flavors and things to do in the summer sun. Why not both? 